Hi there, and welcome to this lecture. In this video, we will explore how we can run system commands through Perl. There can be some cases where you want to do some sysadmin tasks that, for example, requires you to list files, run some commands, or maybe you want to create your deployment scripts and you want to execute some of the git commands, so on and so on. As always, scenarios depend on the use cases. Now, the good thing is that Perl allows you to call system commands, and it actually allows you to call system commands in three ways. One way is where you can actually capture the output of the system command you run in Perl script. The second is that you can run a system command without capturing output, and maybe you want to just execute command and quit your script afterwards. So let's explore the first scenario where we can run a system command and capture the output of that command. You can invoke a system command by using two backticks. For example, here I can say ls or list, and I want to list files in a current directory. And what I could do, I could say my output equals the result of this command. If we run our script, now if we also print the outputs of what was stored in this variable, so say output and run our command, we're going to see script.pl. So it listed and printed out the files currently in our directory. If we did that in our terminal with ls and the current directory, we can see the same thing. Now we can also make this a little bit more useful. And before outputting the contents of, the, of our directory, what we could do, we could say run system command, which is going to create a file in our current directory, which are going to call based on this context dot text file for each list of numbers, one to 10. So this should create 10 files, with the names from one to 10 and append text to it. So if we save this and rerun our script, we're going to observe two things. The 10 files were created in our current working directory, and also we got the output from this list command. I also talked about alternatives of how you can run system commands if you might not care about the output. There's a keyword you can use called system. So what system takes is a list of commands you want to execute as strings. So for example, we could say ls, and the second element is going to be the next argument we want to run with the system command. And this would be equivalent of running ls space dot forward slash. So if we save this, and let's actually try to capture output of this, and this equals to our system command. And if we print this out by using say output, and I'm also going to interpolate this in a string, which I'm going to add to output. Save this, go to the terminal, run the script. What we're going to see is that we actually get all the contents printed out to the terminal. But do take note that these contents do not come from the variable of output that we're printing here. What we're getting in the output variable is actually zero. And zero indicates a successful execution of this system command. Now the system command was actually run in a child process. The contents of what we see here in our terminal were printed out separately. So that is a key difference between using backticks and using system command. When you do care about the outputs and saving that to a variable, you can use two backticks and provide the command there. If you don't care about the output, you can use a function which is called system and you provide all the arguments in a list context. Now I also talked about the third way, which allows you to execute a command and quit after execution. So let's try to do that. And it's very similar to system command. So what you do, you type exec, and let's still try to assign outputs of this exec command, and let's try to print it out. So if I clear my terminal, save the script file, and let's run our script again. So perl script.pl, what we're going to observe is a similar behavior to the system command. We got the output printed out from our child process and it's still visible in our terminal. However, we're not seeing anything printed out after we run our exec command. And that is the key difference. When you run exec, it's going to execute the command and quit the script. So all the code you write after that command is simply not going to be taken in account. So nothing is printed to the terminal. So you might be wondering which command you would use when. Again, as always, it depends on scenarios. You might want to list all the files and parse the output from the system command using the backticks to, for example, get all the file names. You might just care about running a system command in background and continuing your execution of the script without caring about the output. Or alternatively, you might want to run some specific output in a use case where you don't want to execute any follow-up code if, for example, some conditional statement was true. It really depends, and it's always up to you which use case you'll find the best fit for the job. So this is it for this video. We looked at three ways how we can run system commands using backticks, system keyword, and exec keyword. I hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you at the next one.